All right, guys, to get us started drawing our Pete Cromer inspired animals, you're going to receive these think sheets as well as this half sheet of watercolor paper. You will not receive a full sheet because you need it to be small enough that when we cut out our animals and collage it onto our paper, it will fit. If we use a full size sheet or a bigger sheet, it won't fit on our colored background. So we are not going to be keeping on this background. It will be cut out and then glued onto a colored sheet of paper and you will get to choose your colored background. So you are going to need the small sheet to work on to get us started. I also need you to have your pencil and eraser ready to go for sketching. Remember we're going to sketch it lightly until we get it right in case we make a mistake. And then once we are happy with all of our sketching we will go over it with Sharpie. So you need to decide what animal are you wanting to do. Do you want to choose one of the birds or do you want to choose one of the other animals on the think sheet that I provided for you. For this example I'm going to show you quickly doing one of the birds. I'm going to look at this bird right here. Now I noticed that it has some pieces that are floating and are not connected to the bird and that is important. I'm going to get to those later. I want to look first at the shape of the overall bird and I want to try to use my large sheet of paper over here, my half sheet of paper, to draw large. I want this shape of the body to take up as much paper as possible. If you draw it teeny tiny like this, your bird is going to be too small. You want to draw it big. You want to take up your paper. So I'm going to go ahead and sketch out the shape of the bird's body. And you can already see here that I've tried to use most of my paper. I've made sure the body is large. Now I'm going to look at the inside details, the eyes and these other shapes. Remember you are allowed to change up shapes. You don't have to keep it as the exact same shapes I have given you here. You are allowed to be creative with your shapes. You can look at these examples and you can see lots of different shapes that he included on his animals. So feel free to get creative and add in your own shapes and designs. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add in the details on the face as well as the rest of the body. And I'm gonna tweak it a little bit to my own liking. So let's go ahead, I'll get that sketched in. All right, and you can see here that I have finished sketching in the details inside the bird's body. I changed it up a little bit. I added in some different shapes in that circle around the eye. I also changed up some of the shapes over on the sides, added in a new one, and I kept that signature shape he uses on the wings, but I also added in some ovals on the inside. You can change anything you'd like. You can add in more shapes. You can make it as unique as you want, but you may be wondering what about the beak and these other feathers? I may not have enough room for them on my paper. If I wanted to do the beak, maybe it would be too big and it would run off the page. Well, the good news is I do have some extra room over here. And if you absolutely do not have any more room at all, you can ask me to bring you an extra sheet of paper and I will bring you another small sheet that you can use. So for example, I may say, hmm, I can't fit the beak over here, but I can fit it right here. And I may not be able to fit those large feathers up here, but maybe I can go ahead and do some of these small ones and the circles. Remember, we will be cutting this out and puzzle piecing it back together on our colored sheet of paper. So it's okay if your pieces are out of order. I need to use my other sheet of paper to draw in these taller feathers. Maybe I'll do a couple more than what he has on there. So now I have all the pieces that I'm going to use for my bird. I have the whole body done. I've included all the shapes. I also have the head feathers. So now that I'm happy with everything I've sketched out, it's time to trace it all with Sharpie. The same rule applies to the other animals if you are drawing them and you're running out of space. Let's say a tail is coming up too high and you do not have room to fit it on the page. Let's say that the ears are too big and you can't fit those on the page. Or using my example here, I can't fit the trunk onto my page, so I'm going to need an extra sheet to finish drawing in the trunk. That is okay. If you end up running off of one page and needing to go into another page, we can make it work. Remember, we can collage it together. Either we can end up matching the two pieces like this, or we can do a little bit of overlap where we'd be gluing it on top, like a collage piece. So here you can see that I need to finish off the trunk, so I'm going to use my extra page over here and finish sketching in the trunk. And there we go. So now I have the trunk finished on a separate sheet of paper. You can also add in things that aren't on the paper. Maybe I want to have a few little things of water coming out from the trunk. So I'm going to include a few little drops that I would add in there. That is fine. You can come up with your own ideas. And if your drawing ends up being a little too big to fit on the 
page together, we can always turn it sideways and then it will fit. So feel free to ask for an extra sheet of paper if you cannot fit your entire drawing on one. And now that everything has been traced with Sharpie, you can see still some of my pencil lines sticking out from underneath those shapes where I didn't exactly hit the same exact line. You want to make sure you erase all of those pencil lines because we're going to be doing our watercolor next. And if you leave any of those pencil lines, we can't erase them once the watercolor is on top. This is also a chance that if you decide you want to add in more shapes now that you see it all outlined with Sharpie, you can also go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly, I'm going to erase my pencil lines and I think I'm going to add in a few shapes inside these tall head feathers and maybe just a couple more on the body. Alright, so all I did was use my large eraser to go really well inside all of those shapes and get out any pencil lines. So now I have a clean drawing that I'm going to start my watercolor on. Remember that Pete Cromer uses lots of bright colors in his collage artworks and he also does a lot of color blends. So we're going to try to blend some colors on here. So instead of painting one piece just one color, maybe we do some sections where we have different colors on there. Another thing to keep in mind is thinking about your smaller shapes. If you have some smaller shapes that you think are going to be difficult to fit with watercolor, skip the watercolor and just use markers. For example, I may want to just go ahead and color in these small circles with my marker, or I could even do a watercolor bleed. So if you remember that from our other projects, I can take a marker and I can outline that area and then I can use a little bit of water on my brush to just go ahead and paint it in and it'll cause that marker to bleed. And I've now filled in the space, essentially making my own watercolor. So that is an option for any parts of your project. If you really liked doing the marker bleeds, you can do that on all of your piece, or you can also include some watercolor, do a combination of both. So color in any areas you think may be difficult for you to squeeze in with your watercolor. I'll go ahead and do that quickly with my markers on my small spaces. Okay, and now that I have those areas filled in, I can go ahead and start using my watercolor to do my watercolor blends. So I'm going to start off first down here in this section, and I wanna think about what colors will blend well together. Avoid complementary pairs. Remember, if it's a complement, they're gonna end up making brown. So if you use blue and orange together, you're going to get a very gross swampy color. Red and green together is going to give you a very gross color, as well as if you try yellow and purple not the best combo. Think about mixing the primary colors to make the secondary colors. Like if I use yellow and red, I can make orange. So let's try that down here in this small section. I'm going to start off with some yellow first. So I'm going to go ahead and place some yellow watercolor onto my paper. And then I'm going to add in some red with it, allowing the two to overlap in some areas and it's going to start to make orange. Maybe I want to completely overlap the two. Like here, I might want to almost paint on top of my entire yellow section to make that light orange at the bottom. And I'm just lightly going into here with my watercolor, and I'm going to fill in over on this section. The secret to doing the blends with your watercolor to make a really cool blended effect like this is you have to do it while the colors are wet. If your colors dry, they will not blend together. So if I wanted this to blend a little more here, I just have water on my brush and I'm just kind of rolling in a circular motion to create a blend and to get rid of those harsh, harsh edges. I can also take a small sprinkle of salt lay that on top and let it sit if I want it to make that really cool crystallizing effect. You don't wanna brush the salt off until it's completely dry. So I'm just going to leave it there and let it sit. You just want a small pinch of salt. If you try to put a glob of salt or if you try to dump the salt, it's going to ruin your watercolor. So make sure it's just a small pinch and then leave it alone. I may want to move up here to my little band and I might try to do maybe a combination of some cool colors. Let's start with blue on my bottom half. So I'll put a little blue there and let's blend it with some green to make like a blue green color. So I'm gonna get a little green, do green on the top, allow those two to overlap together in the center to start making a little bit of the blend. So it looks like one color is fading into the other color doing this while it's wet so I can get the two colors to work together. Trying to avoid overlapping the areas that I just worked on because if you try to get, or if you don't try hard and you get too close to it, you're gonna end up mixing those warm and cools. Same thing if I want a little bit of that salt on there, I'm just going to sprinkle a small bit 
just a few little pieces and then I'm going to move on. Another really cool thing you can do with watercolor is what's called a wet on wet technique. All that is is taking your brush and wetting the area first. And I really like doing this, it's almost like a magic trick. Taking the water, just getting the area wet and prepped and then I'm going to pick my color and I'm going to drop the color on and you can already see it starting to blend and bleed into where the water is. This way you can quickly paint in and you can get that really cool water like color look where you have that blended nice areas. Some are really like more um, light and some of them are a little darker. So where you drop the color, it's gonna be a little darker and where you stretch it, it's gonna be lighter. If you wanna darken up those other areas, just come back in with some more of the color and use your brush to stretch it out. Same thing if you want to do blends here while the color is still wet, I can come in with another color and I can start blending the two together. So I like to blend going in this circular motion to make it so I don't have those harsh edges. What I mean by that is if you try to just paint like this up and down, you can see really abruptly where that color stops and the other one starts. But if you go over it with a circular motion, it kind of helps to blend those two colors together. So I'm going to just quickly blend a little bit here to show you guys using that method. And it's okay if you go outside your lines, we are gonna be cutting this out. Using a little bit of salt, drop it on top and let it sit. So I'm going to go ahead and finish painting in the rest of my bird as well as the head feathers. So I have finished painting in all the parts of my bird. I've done some of the different colored blends so it has some interest in it and you can even see where the salt has started to dry in some areas and it's leaving behind that really cool crystally effect. So you want to let everything completely dry before you cut it out. If you try to cut it out right now when it's wet, you risk blending and bleeding colors where you don't want them to go and you also might end up ripping your paper because you cannot really cut wet paper that well. You also can see where I went outside the lines in a lot of my shapes because I'm gonna cut it out so there was no need to stress trying to stay in the lines. So I'm gonna go ahead and let everything dry and then I'm gonna quickly show you um, cutting it out and putting it together. All right, and now that all of your pieces are cut out, you're going to get to choose the background color that you want to use. So I'll have several different options available for you to pick from and you will choose the one that you think works best for your animal. For this example, I'm going to use the red paper and before I start gluing things down, I can pre-stage which means I'm going to arrange the pieces and make a decision about the composition. Do I want pieces to go in one spot or another? So as I'm starting to put pieces down, I may notice, you know what, I don't think I want this one above, I think I want this one to come below here. And then maybe I would like this one to come up here and maybe I wanna scatter these around this way. You do not have to immediately glue it down. You can keep playing with the shapes you have made until you are happy with how it looks. Same thing for its arrangement on the page. Maybe you want it to be scooched a little more to the left or a little more to the right. You can pick and choose before you glue everything down. So I'm just going to start placing my pieces and then play with the composition a little bit more. Yeah. And for the gluing, I'm just going to use my glue stick to stick everything down onto the paper. Okay. Double check to make sure that you have all of your edges glued flat onto the paper. You can pick up your artwork, make sure nothing falls off of it. And then if you have extra time or if you want to move over into this step, the final thing is just adding in some finishing touches. Maybe you want to come back in with your Sharpie and you want to include some of those other little line details that Pete Cromer would add into his artworks. So I'm just adding in a few little extra designs onto parts of my artwork using lines, shapes, like these little plus signs or X's. I'm just adding in some extra little touches to the artworks to make it a finished and completed piece. If there's nothing else you want to add with your Sharpie, you may want to consider going back in with some colored pencils and maybe just doing some touch-ups on some of the different parts of your pieces. Maybe I wanted to make this edge down here a little bit darker with the orange. I could always come back in with some orange colored pencil and just add in a little extra color. So if there's any other touch-ups you want to do with your Sharpie or with your colored pencil, that is the final step before you call it a completed artwork. So I'm just going to quickly do some of my final touch-ups and that will be it for me. If there's anything else that you think you need to add, make sure you do that before you call it done. Once you are completely happy with it, there's nothing else you want to add, we will be putting it on the drying rack to make sure it is completely dry, the glue is set on there, um, and that any extra 
extra little things you put won't fall off. I hope you guys enjoy making your peat chromer animals.